What's up everyone and welcome back to my Ninja Gaiden 2 playthrough. Today we've got chapter 9 part 2. Also we've got two bosses. Well actually it's three bosses. And we're gonna start off with some really fun part. Oh yes, you see that? That's some big yellow essence. And yes, these guys do give you a lot of essence if you kill them with a UT. So keep that in mind if you're having some trouble. If you need some essence, remember to absorb the essence and not use it for another UT like I do. And you can make a lot of essence. I think it's about 25,000 essence from this really, really easy fight right here. This is just nothing. Of course it's a little bit harder if you're trying to absorb the essence and not use it to chain UTs, but it's not that bad. Also notice that you can't go back once you trade that fight. So you're gonna have to break that rock with a UT, drop down here. There are a few bats, only small bats, so use Shuriken to take care of them. And we've got a very long tunnel coming up. And a lot of respawning bugs, whatever they are called. They're just bugs. And what I do is I just run past them until the first room where you can go into appears. So from here on I'm gonna start chaining UTs. Uh, the side UT is recommended, of course. And they will just come at you. So you can just chain one UT after another. And I think this is a little bit more comfortable than working your way through these guys. You just chain UTs and let them come at you. It's super easy. And again, it's a lot of essence as well. I'll let him come. Let him come. That's right, man. Again, Psych UT is recommended. But the Kusarigama UT is pretty fine as well. So, what's coming up, ne what's coming up next is a boss which is a pain in the ass if you don't know how to fight him and this was one of the few moments where I was really scared of when like I was starting Master Ninja I was like man I, I can never beat this boss on Master Ninja it was giving me so much trouble every time and yeah I checked out YouTube and stuff and Guess what? There's a super easy way to take care of this guy. Which is really obvious, but I never thought about it. And whenever the music starts playing, now is the time. That's the room you want to go into. Yeah, when the music starts playing, you know it's time for the boss. And usually I would go outside the tunnel like this and start charging my UT and try to hit him, try to get the timing so that uh, my UT would hit him. And this way you can stun that motherfucker and if you're lucky he doesn't do his rampage bullshit and you can deal some damage. If he does his rampage bullshit however you're gonna get eaten in your fucking face for insane damage. So yeah, there are a few strategies for this guy. Like I said, you can go just balls the walls and hit him in the face. It's the fastest way to do. Use your talisman of rebirth if you want to. And just use your strongest and fastest weapon. Use all of your Nimpo. This will also stun him if you use Nimpo. And yeah, just beat his ugly face. 
Now this is what you see right here is the strategy that I didn't think of which I saw on YouTube and I was like man this is this is awesome <laughs> I can finally beat this guy without any trouble at all so what you want to do is as you can see charge bow UTs listen to the sound when he approaches you you just want to shoot him and that's basically it there's even a more easy way to do or an easier way to do and that would be using scythe UTs yes it's that simple oh yeah and you're gonna see that now because the aiming is is a lot easier to do it's a lot easier to perform a hit and I think it also deals more damage oh well maybe not I'm not sure However, just to show you guys. And I'm gonna cut out most of it because it's repetitive and it's boring. And also remember not to get too close to the to the tunnel. Especially when you're using the side UTs. We will always make a few steps forward, so take care of that because sometimes this asshole will get stuck and look at you and try to grab you and it works even through the walls he can grab you that's why when I'm using the scythe UTs to take care of this guy I always dash dash away from the tunnel and yeah there is the next save point and also the next fight with some smaller versions of the boss you just saw and just skip this fight. There's nothing nothing to gain from this fight, it's just bullshit. And speaking of bullshit, let me introduce you to the most bullshit enemy in the entire game. If I ever manage to find my way. Yay! <laughs> These fish enemies have only one good point to them. Oh, well actually it's two. First they give you a lot of essence. Second they can be glitched. <laughs> As you see there there's a safe spot. You just jump there to the water and spam the freaking spear gatling bullshit thing. And it's kind of satisfying to do that. Especially if these guys kept killing you quite a few times on chapter 14 where they can't be glitched or well, not as effective oh yeah let's do some first person shooter style here this is call of guide right now oh man and these guys give you a lot of essence you can also try to kill them with the side UTs to gain even more essence out of it, but it's a waste of time, I think, because it takes ages. <laughs> so we got a dynamic grain chest down there, you just saw. Over here I thought there would be something maybe, but it's not. We got a corpse of a devil ray mushroom, right? Right, and the Jewel of the Demon Seal. And I don't think I mentioned that before, but I use these Demon Seals to upgrade my Void Ninpo as a second Ninpo. And that's very useful for the upcoming boss. And man, you see me wasting the <laughs> safe stat here. And there we go. As soon as you touch the door, the big door, the gate, whatever, you're gonna spawn another set of fish and also the chainsaw cannon zombies is what I call them. These guys are super cool. They are also a nice throwback to Ninja Gaiden where you had those very slow zombie enemies. And these guys are fun because you can just 
and spam your freaking insane combos which you could never use on regular enemies because they just can't survive them and these guys can't take it these guys can take the freaking damage for like eternity seriously I think the only way to take care of these guys properly is either to delimb them and OT them or use incendiary shurikens which is pretty much the same as delimbing them twice but in terms of damage Pure damage, these guys can be really hard to kill. <laughs> also, they have a really weird stagger. You see, I can just mash into him and he's staggered all day. But sometimes that doesn't work. And also, note that they have some insane iframes to most of their attacks. You're gonna see that soon. I think you're gonna see that soon with the incendiary shurikens and yeah I think I don't have to mention it but these guys will also give you a lot of essence if you kill them with UTs ah well uh, UTs is also a good way to take care of these guys but mostly because of the deliberate and not for damage you see there two incendiary shurikens were stuck to this motherfucker and they both exploded while he was trying to do his jump attack on me and it didn't didn't hurt him at all so that's some very long very long iframes and also we got another set of those fish coming up spawning whatever and you see there's another safe spot in this lake and that is if you just jump to the right but be careful sometimes one of them can slip through somehow so don't go too far to the right from this position where I am right now don't go too far to the right because that will make them slip slip through to you more often so just jump down and start spamming spears at, it, at those assholes and there's really nothing to it but don't forget to absorb the essence I forget to do it or maybe no no I don't I didn't forget it but I just didn't care anymore you see now that you gotta go onto that island and this way it works so yeah I didn't care about absorbing all of the essence I think I think a little bit of essence just disappeared but it's okay I have enough essence I'm still missing a talisman of rebirth but that's no problem because right behind that gate there will be a dynamic talisman chest so try to stay with your talisman up until this point try not to get rid of it because that will give you 50,000 essence, which is pretty cool. Alright, now let's go on and this video is almost over because... Oh yeah, I already stuck some stuff there. I didn't show that. Just went to Mormasa, used one grain, bought another one, went back to save and everything. Alright, so now let's go on. We're gonna have this little underwater passage here. And as you can see, to swim faster, use faster, to swim faster, use some of the, the attacks. I think every weapon has has some underwater attack that lets you move really fast. That's cool. But all in all I think they should have just removed the water part at least the fighting because <laughs> it's stupid and yeah like I said this part is almost over this this chapter is almost over because you're gonna have a really really big set of those chainsaw cannon zombies and just I just skip them if you want essence go charge one UT after another take care of one after another I just don't do so because I don't need the essence 
And now let's go for the boss fight, which is super easy if you have the Void Nimpo level 3. And you're gonna see why, if you don't know. Also, I wanna tell you something that I, I didn't know about this fight is you can just use the, the right the right analog stick to switch between the two dragons so you can switch the camera and you see two void nimbos level three is enough to kill one dragon just wait for them to stay still and look at that 50 percent so this is really easy and that's also the end of chapter 9. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was a little bit of fun, a little bit of help. And we'll see you guys in chapter 10 with a really messed up fight. 